Hi, this is Dr. Nikki, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. I am talking about my favorite tool. Everybody knows this is my favorite tool. If you've ever been to any of my workshops, this is what we make, the beaded number line, because this is the tool. If you have nothing else in your classroom, if you don't even believe in manipulatives, this is what you need. This right here is going to change your lives. I'm going to tell you what to do with it. Now, I have videos by grade level, so you can look at some of the other videos to see what we do in third and second and so forth. I just want to do a quick review, though, of some of that stuff before we go on to specifically what you'll do in fourth grade. Um, in third grade, you're going to shore up rounding, right? That's one of the things you do with this. So if we look at, you know, 42 and we say, what does 42 round to? 42 rounds to 40. We can see really clearly that 42, I was at 32, 42 rounds to 40 right um kids can visualize it and see it remember in third grade they begin to round to the nearest 10 and the nearest hundred and then in fourth grade they round to any number so one of the things that you want to do is rounding rounding is really really important and the thing is that you um when you're rounding you teach kids like okay we're going to round 42 to the nearest 10. so you can do that on um, this number line but you want to have multiple number lines so that you can say you know what are we going to round 565 to and then kids can round to the nearest 10 they can round to the nearest 100 they can see where 565 sits on the number line you want kids to be able to do that to imagine where numbers numbers are, to know where they are, to be able to picture that, and then to work with those numbers. So the beaded number line is great for rounding. It will shore up what kids are, you know, experiencing as gaps. Um, and then the next thing, it, you know, it's just the place value of it. So kids can see that there's 10 tens in 100. So when you say how many tens are in 200, they can see there's 20 tens in 200. How many tens are in 300? There's 30 tens. Those are the questions that are on the test that the kids miss. You want kids to really be able to see that and you can show that with the beaded number line. And that's why I say have um, a variety of them. The children only need one, but as the teacher, you're going to need more than one. Um, and then, you know, adding and subtracting, kids are still kind of shaky sometimes in fourth grade with adding and subtracting multi-digit numbers. So just go back to the strategies for those double-digit numbers. What is 27 plus 34? And then kids can see, oh, 27, wow, that's really near 30. I'm just going to go up three. Now I'm at 30, and I'm not going to add 34. Now I'm only going to add 31 because I already added the other three on this end. Um, what is 79 minus, you know, um, 50 or what is seven, 74 minus 39 kids can see oh I'm going to take away 40 because 40 is really easy to take away and then I'll just put back one so they can see that and do that and manipulate that on the number line so that's really really important um, you also want kids to know like what is um, 74 minus 40 well I can just count up right because addition is much easier than subtraction. Remember, Van Wall, Godfather of Math, said that, right? So you want kids to be able to do that kind of stuff, and the beaded number line allows them to do that. Um, so those are some of the things. But now for the fourth grade stuff. Um, in fourth grade, you start dealing with decimals. And this is wonderful for decimals because, see, this is the whole. The whole beaded number line is the whole, and each of these are in tenths. And now each individual one is hundredths. So we have hundredths, we have tenths, and we have one whole. I mean, it's it's amazing. And so now when you're like looking at equivalent decimals, kids can actually see, you, you know, people use money a lot, but money is very abstract, right? To say 10 pennies is equal to a dime and so forth. It becomes very abstract, but kids can see here, oh, well, if I have two tenths, I have 20 hundredths. They can see that. So you can do a lot of work with those decimal equivalents that kids struggle with. Oh, I have four tenths. I have 40 hundredths. It becomes very easy for kids to see that. And then to add a tenth or subtract a tenth, to add a hundredth or subtract a hundredth, it, it, you know, really, really good stuff. And so, and then you can have kids, you know, adding what is two tenths plus um, 30 hundredths. They could see what that is. It becomes very easy to see two tenths and then 30 hundredths, right? So you want to really use this in fourth grade to not only work on rounding, but to really work on decimals and playing with decimals and getting kids on friendly terms with decimals, use this so kids can see that this is the whole. Um, so those are some of the things that I would do 
in fourth grade. Also, to short multiplication, remember that in fourth grade, kids are supposed to know how to multiply and divide within 100 fluently. That's not always the case. That's the hope, right? That's the dream, but that's not always the reality. So you can really use this to go back and reinforce what kids are, are lacking, right? So um, getting kids to multiply, you know, by seven so they can break this off. You use a lot of clothespins and then the kids break it off and so then they can see those multiples um, and they can practice skip counting and so forth. Also for division, it's really important. Kids can, you know, see, okay, I have 30. And in fourth grade, remember, you're working with remainder. So if you say, okay, I have 30 and I'm going to divide it by seven. So the question really is, how many sevens can I take out of 30? Kids are going to clip that and then they'll see and they'll see, oh, there's a remainder here right and so that's really really good it's powerful to be able to see that on the beaded number line so I would use it for multiplication and division especially the division and showing the remainder all right so I think that covers the fourth grade you know stuff but remember also close the gaps close the gaps use it to close the gaps that the kids have from second and third grade thank you for joining me happy mathing mm -hmm.